all of the following are correct regarding congenital CMV infection except. So there are four statements they have mentioned. First option is sensory neural hearing loss is the most common sequela of congenital CMV. All of the following are correct regarding congenital CMV infection except. So there are four statements they have mentioned. First option is sensory neural hearing loss is the most common sequela of congenital CMV. Second is sensory neural hearing loss can occur even in asymptomatic neonates. Option C is any neonate failing newborn screening needs evaluation for congenital CMV. And option D is children with congenital CMV infection need evaluation of hearing only if they have microcephaly. Among these four options, it is the D option which is incorrect and that is your correct. And that is the answer here because the question is asking all except. Now, what are the key points about congenital CMV which are mentioned in this question that you need to remember? So, according to Nelson as well as Cloherty, regarding sensory neural hearing loss and congenital CMV, what are the key points that you should remember? The first key point is the first statement which has been given that sensory neural hearing loss is the most common long-term sequela of congenital CMV infection. This is the first thing that you should remember. Second thing, it is not that the sensory neural hearing loss is going to, this deafness is going to happen only in symptomatic children. It can even happen in asymptomatic children. So, the second thing that you need to remember is frequency of sensory neural hearing loss. If it is a symptomatic congenital CMV, if it is a symptomatic congenital CMV, the frequency of sensory neural hearing loss is as high as 60 to 65 percent. Whereas if it is asymptomatic congenital CMV, it is about 5 to 7 percent. Cloherty gives a single value of 5 percent. But uh, other uh, textbooks and other articles give a range of 5 to 7 percent. So, the one of the option which was true was it can even happen in asymptomatic patients. That is a true statement. The third thing that you should remember is that in all diagnosed patients of sensory neural hearing loss, you should watch for, you should look out for any evidence of congenital CMV. So, retrospectively, you will try to see if congenital CMV was the reason why a sensory neural hearing loss was present in the child. When I say in all diagnosed patients of SNHL, I would, uh, you have to mention all patients presenting in first six months of SNHL, you should look out for congenital CMV infection, right? And the fourth thing that you should remember is that in patients with congenital CMV, in all congenital CMV patients, you should do screening for SNHL. This screening for SNHL should be done at the time of birth and then every 6 to 12 monthly till about 2 years of age. So, even if they are asymptomatic congenital CMV infection, you find that there is evidence of CMV infection in the patient, you will do it till 2 years of age. Now, whether it is to be done 6 to 12 monthly or it is 6 monthly and sometimes annual examination till 2 years of age, it varies across various guidelines. There is no consensus on that. The key thing which Nelson is very, uh, you know, smart, Cloherty is very smart. They don't give annual or biannual or any such thing. They simply mention that you have to do till 2 years of age in all congenital CMV, even if they are asymptomatic, the screening or follow-up in ENT clinic needs to be done till about 2 years of age. So, this is the potential MCQ which can be asked. I am putting a star here, right? Mm -hmm.